As Australians, we're raised on the notion of a fair go. If we think that someone's been hard done by, we'll do whatever it takes to set things right, even if the injustice happened in another country and more than a century ago. Now, you might remember the classic, iconic movie, Breaker Morant. The Breaker and his army mate, Peter Hancock, were tried and executed during the last days of South Africa's Boer War. At the time, the Brits portrayed them as cold-blooded killers, and many still passionately believe that. But there are others who claim that they were mere scapegoats for the empire. And all these years on, they're now fighting to win our boys an official pardon. It's an intriguing story that spans three continents across more than a hundred years. It's an epic tale of war and justice that asks whether one can ever truly exist alongside the other. When we think about the Aussie spirit and where it came from, I believe it was forged in South Africa, not in Gallipoli, not in the Western Front, in South Africa. Nick, that's a big call. Big call. And Baker, Breaker Morant's story is full of big calls. Shoot straight, you bastards! Don't make a mess of it! Harry Breaker Morant was your classic Aussie digger who left home to fight in the brutal Boer War of the late 1890s. But his conviction for killing prisoners and his execution at the hands of the same British army that he'd served have earned Breaker Morant an infamous place in our history. Ever since the first word came back from South Africa that these guys had been shot, something didn't smell right. And the court of public opinion has never been convinced. A psychopath or a political scapegoat? After all these years, that question may finally be put to rest. There's now a demand for a full pardon. The fight to clear the breaker's name has been put forward by the Australian government. It's gone all the way to the gilded halls of Buckingham Palace. If it means that the uh, British made errors in law, they should be held accountable. If it means that the British had ulterior motives to execute these men, then they should be held accountable. They make an odd couple, but these two blokes are prepared to shout this historic injustice from the rooftops. But it's time to hold people accountable. It's and a campaign now. led by Jim Uncles, a defence lawyer and officer in the Royal Australian Navy Reserve. Scape gates of the Empire! And Nick Mazinski is a rampaging Scottish-Australian journalist. We are asking the British government to overturn their convictions. Do you think you know what happened? I think I do. I think I'm closer than anyone else has ever been to the truth of the matter. It was over a century ago that 16,000 young Aussie boys volunteered to come here to South Africa and fight the Boers. They finished up down there, what was then called the Northern Transvaal, one of the wildest, most remote parts in the whole British Empire. They were just blokes from the bush. They'd had a roll up, the bands had marched through all the dusty towns in Australia and said, young men, this is your chance to serve your country. It's a chance for Australia to prove it's worthy of being part of the British Empire. And of course, among them was the legendary Breaker Morant, an enigmatic, well-educated Englishman who became a womanizing, hard-drinking Aussie larrikin, who went off to fight the last great war of the British Empire. He was a bush poet. The night's a trifle chilly, and the stars are very bright. He was a horse breaker. He rode the most dangerous horse that ever came out of the bush in Australia. It was a bloody battle for the gold and diamond riches of South Africa. In its final stages, Morant, along with his Aussie mates, the so-called Bushveld Carboneers, were left to mop up the remnants of Dutch Boer farmers. It was a full-blooded war that most Australians came to know through the classic 1980s film, Breaker Morant. With Edward Woodward as the breaker. Aim! Fire! Brian Brown plays Peter Hancock, the amorous blacksmith from Bathurst. Worst thing about dying, no more girls. Ah! 
They fought a guerrilla war down there, a dirty war, almost without rules. They were part of the biggest army the Brits had ever pulled together. Yet out of 450,000 men, Lord Kitchener, who was the supreme British commander, selected three Australians. Three Aussies who'd come here to fight for Queen and for Empire. And he charged them with war crimes and he sentenced them to death. Lieutenant Breaker Morant insisted until the very end that all he'd done was follow orders. The orders from Kitchener himself. Not guilty. Not guilty. Morant, Hancock, and a third Australian, Lieutenant George Whitman, were charged with shooting Boer farmers. Their trial was a travesty and held in secret. Morant and Hancock were found guilty and executed. I know a dirty case when I see one. Military lawyer Jim Uncles has studied Breaker's mistreatment by the British with a keen legal eye. He believes that they were executed just to appease the Boer commanders in the dying days of the war. No notice of their arrest, no notice of their trial, no notice of their execution. And indeed, the Australian government wasn't advised of their arrest or execution. But you know, historians, military historians, the War Memorial, the RSL, nobody agrees with you. That's fine. They're entitled to their view. I say that after 108 years of inaction and silence, something has to be done. Now, what Jim the Crusader has done with Nick the Historian is petitioned the British Parliament and ultimately the Queen to rewrite the ending of the Breaker Morant story. After five years of research, I concluded that Morant and Hancock were indeed scapegoats. Scapegoats for, for Lord Kitchener's murderous policy, basically. Kitchener had undoubtedly, in my mind, given orders to take no prisoners. It was being practiced quite widely in South Africa. But the minute that it threatened to become public, Kitchener was never going to allow that fact to come out. But there's another highly emotional side to this saga in South Africa. Yeah. Welcome to Bushfield Carbonier's Break and Run Thank you. Thank you. We've brought Jim and Nick here to face Charles Leach, a passionate fifth generation African. Leach runs tours of the Boer War battlefield. But if they're tried wrongly, if they're tr not yes. tried in accordance with the law, and, and they are selectively picked out of a whole yes. bunch, yes. a whole gallery yes. of guilty people, yes. and then executed... But, but the no, 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 let me finish. Yes. No, no. My ancestors died here. Yes. The children yeah. and the girls and the boys, and the, they died in the war. Mm. That's yes. what, to me, counts. Yes, yes. Yeah. absolutely. Travel across the sweeping belt of the Transvaal, which looks a lot like Australia, and you can understand their bitterness. This is a landscape littered with graves and ghosts, with memorials and bad memories. The British burned down 30,000 Boer homesteads and they destroyed the farms. Even more horrific were their concentration camps, in which 27,000 South African women and children died. And this was the worst of the camps? This, this one was known as Hell Camp. It had the highest percentage of deaths per inmate. Most of them, most of them children. England want our gold, they want our diamonds, and they um, burn everything down and take the women to the concentration camp, camps, and they died. I, I get very emotional at some of these places. Why? It's part of my, heri my, 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 my heritage. Here we are at, the, at a civilian monument. What still upsets Charles in Leach in Limpopo, and everyone I else here, we discovered, is that Morant actually confessed in, in to shooting up to a dozen unarmed Boer farmers and young boys, even though he insisted he was strictly following British orders. He shot them in the back. They weren't prisoners. They weren't soldiers. Why? Why? They was innocent children. What I know is that he was a murderer. They were murderers. They were charged with 12 murders. My research search says 34. Insignificant in the grand total. But 100 years later, we're still talking about it? Insignificant? No, sir. 
Who was a real war criminal? Was it Kitchener or Morant? Well, technically speaking, the guy who gives the orders is the criminal. But the guy who, who takes those orders beyond the limit, I reckon he's also to blame. He was absolutely ruthless, Kitchener. There's, there's no question about it. Finally, it comes down to whether we believe Breaker Morant and his Australians were following Lord Kitchener's orders when they killed the farmers. According to military academic Saul David, there's still no evidence of any such order. What sort of a bloke was Kitchener? Uh, he was the sort of man that the British Army has often used when things get tough. He's the sort of man who gets things done, uh, but when we look back at him in the cold light of history, we're pretty appalled. Uh, he's the sort of man that made the empire. Why isn't there any evidence at all that Kitchener had this take no prisoners policy? I think Kitchener was a very smart man. Kitchener knew that to order the shooting of Boer prisoners was indeed illegal and a controversial act. And that if he was going to practice it, he was going to practice it under the tables, so to speak. They used to say that the sun never set on the British Empire. When it was going down here in South Africa, it was already tomorrow across the ocean in Australia. And as dawn awakens Canberra, Jim Uncles, along with relatives of Morant and his mates, have launched the Australian stage of their mission. They want the federal parliament to push the Brits for a pardon. This case is an unjust stain on Australia's identity and military history. For the descendants, this matter has been a source of intense grief and personal interest. It's an historic moment. These men uh, will finally receive a hearing that they really deserved back in 1902. We've got to draw a line somewhere. It seems a long-awaited victory. The committee from all sides of politics agree that Morant got a raw deal. And for the Australian relatives, it's been a family stain, almost a family shame, that has until now been locked away. Justice delayed is justice denied, but today, they're getting justice. Brought it out in the open where it needs to be because 108 years of injustice. It's, it's a new beginning, I think. Mm. Hopefully justice will be done. But there'll certainly be no celebrations back in South Africa. Because it was five minutes past 11 on Saturday night, the 31st of May, that the peace treaty was signed. Where Charles Leach and his countrymen gather against your uncle's petition. They still bleed with emotion. They still live with what the British and the breaker left behind. What would you feel if the British decided to pardon Morant and Hancock? I'll be very upset if that happens. I will be very upset. That's not fair. Why, Ronnie? Because he murdered young children and unarmed soldiers. What impact would it have on the British Army, on this sort of leadership, if these two colonials are granted a pardon? I think it would send out a pretty chilling signal, actually, today, at a time when Western soldiers are fighting in places like Afghanistan now and, and recently in Iraq. When similar cases are coming up of the murder of unarmed prisoners of war, I think it would send out a very dangerous signal that such crimes, for whatever reason, are ever justified. Would you make sure they're posted for me, please? And see that this gets published, eh? We poets do crave immortality, you know. On his last night on Earth, Breaker Morant penned his final poem about the hypocrisy of Kitchen. If you encounter any boars, you really must not loot them. And if you wish to leave these shores for pity's sake, don't shoot them. Breaker Morant was refused any right of appeal. Neither his family nor the Australian government knew that he was about to die. Well, Peter, this is what comes of empire building. It's now up to the British government to decide if the case should be reviewed. There are precedents. 
come over here and have a talk about what's really important in your life. Justice! But for Jim Uncles and for Nick, justice won't be done unless the verdicts are overturned, unless the sentences are quashed, and Breaker Morant and his mates are unconditionally pardoned by Queen Elizabeth herself. Feel the weight of the jurisprudence. Take it back and show it your family. It's 1902, madam. 1902. It happened 108 years ago. Yes, 108 years ago. You're a bit late in writing to someone to complain about it. Yes. What I am selling, though, is the truth. The Absolutely. truth is these men were executed unfairly. And the British So Jim, this is the last stop for you. Ray, the buck stops right there with Her Majesty. What do you want from her? I want her to uh, grant these pardons. Do you dream that one day you'll have a cup of tea with Her Majesty? I don't dream, I know I will. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.